Shalom Aleichem and welcome to Machen Leira Online Smicha. It's that time of the year where people go on vacation and at the same time they prepare themselves for next year. These are contracts, uh, 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 employees, hiring, firing, and uh, maybe moving into a new house and paying new rent. So a lot of business questions come up about this time of the year. And interesting enough, what th seems to be such a aloof question is clearly discussed in Shulchan Aruch. And from here you could also uh, understand how, how when you write a contract or you negotiate a deal, how accurate you have to be, and especially something that's happening this, this upcoming year. This upcoming year, Tough Shin Pei Bays will be an Iberyar. So there will be two months of Adar. Now, again, a lot of these questions might not be relevant in the secular calendar if you get paid based on the secular calendar, but if you are running your payment cycle based on a Jewish calendar, uh, every month or every week you get paid based on uh, the, the Parsha of the week or the month or the, or, or the Jewish month, you might run into a small difficulty or, or a small discussion. And this question, many of you might know from Bar Mitzvah, Yard Site, everybody will discuss it, when, uh, what, if a person is born in Adar, when does he make the bar mitzvah? If the bar mitzvah falls out in a, in a leap year, the first adar, the second adar, you might know the question about a yard site. Is it the first one? And that's that's already well spoken. But now I want to discuss the issue of establishing a contract, a payment for a year or a month when there is a leap year. Now we always know that usually when whenever in doubt, better without, which means to say in the contracts, we always follow the principle of You want my money, you have to prove that you deserve my money. Even though it you know, might be, it makes sense. No, no, no. Every time somebody is muhzik, somebody is in possession of something, and somebody else wants it, it's his uh, uh, obligation to, to prove it, not the one who's in possession of it. So now we'll, we'll discuss a dilemma. And it's clearly brought in Shulchan Aruch Chayshe Mishpat Simen Shin Yud Beis Seif Tezvav. Let's see people are sitting down now in an ultra orthodox uh, community, and they're discussing. I want to rent your apartment. Now, who knows January, February? They don't know. They're talking about Tishrei, Cheshvan, Kislev. They're they're entering the new uh, the new calendar, and they they they're, they're they're discussing a yearly rent, a monthly rent. And then there's an Ibiyar. So listen to Mechaber Simen Shun Yud Bey Siv Tezvav. Hamaskir Bayis Lishana. If I rent out a house per year, we negotiated a price $10,000 per year. Bishum Yudua on a specific amount. Vinisabra Hashana. And the year turns out to be an Ibiyar, two others. Says the Halacha Nisabra Lisaycher. Who wins? The renter, the one who's, who's, who's going to be living there, the one who's renting the apartment to live in, when he negotiated a deal per year, the year isn't complete until the full 12, before, before the full 13 months are complete. Hisker lechadashim, if however you, you, the, the, the negotiated deal was based on monthly payments, how much do you pay for, per month? Nisabra lemaskir. Then the person renting out the house, the landlord, he's the one that gets the benefit of the 13th month payment. How about, like everything else in Yiddishkeit, you can't just be, okay, pretty simple. If it's this way, how about a, a twist? His Kirloi Chadoshim Vishana, they negotiated a deal, a monthly payment, and this is X amount per year. So in, in monthly payment, in a regular year, 12 times would come out to the, to the normal, uh, the regular number. But over here, it w doesn't come out 12 times, it's really 13. And the, the two numbers don't match. So if a case where he mentioned the month and the year, no matter if he says it's $100 per month, $1,200 $1, per year. Or even if he said twelve hundred dollars per year, one hundred dollars per month, hare shel 
who deserves to get the, keep or get the money, the landlord has right to charge for that extra month. Why? This is a very important principle. Who is in possession? Who owns the land? Who owns the land? The landlord. So whenever there's a question whether or not you have to pay me, I am in possession of it. You're, you're using it. If, if, it. It seems to be that your usage of my property in a, in a non-sure way, you owe me salary. You owe me rent. And that's why, even though we made both, we, we mentioned both fees, the, 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 the maskier is able to collect it. But it's very important to note that this is specifically only when you are renting a house. The Ramah says if you hire somebody to work for you, and the example is if you hire somebody to teach your children, and he too, they negotiated a monthly salary and a yearly salary, then if they negotiated both, even though they said both, the Malamid also learned the extra, the extra month. The, here, the, mas, the, the, the father who benefited, the, the, the teacher taught for an extra month, will not have to pay that extra month because the Rajma gives them explanation. Here, uh, the, 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 the teacher is not in possession of anything. So it's not like it's his for sure. Adaraba, the father is in possession. So if the father is in possession of the, of the son and uh, the malamage sort of didn't foresee this in, in, in advance, you will not have to pay for that extra month. However, the Achreinim say, when the, when the malamage realizes that it's Ibriyar, he could stop it in advance and say, hey, I'm not going to teach that Ibriyar, the, Ibr, the Ibr Chodesh, unless you pay me. Now, these are some of the discussions that are mentioned. And the Achreinim, they, they say that some say there's a difference when the deal was negotiated. Was the deal negotiated in the beginning of the year, Rosh Hashanah time, or and, and exactly how the wording was as they were negotiating? Did he say Shana or what other expressions? Or the deal was negotiated mid-year? But those are details. But in general, you see that what's... What simple complications that could take place in a negotiated deal is already mentioned in Shulchan Aruch, and it's actually based on the Gemara and the Mishnah in Maseches Bab Metziah.